They say that friends are the family that you choose yourself. And they also say that you are the average of five people you spend the most time with. And much as I agree with both these sayings, I think you can also have it the other way around. Because friends are the family that chooses you, and those five people are the average of you and other people. And by the way, in the eyes of God, there is no such thing as an average person. This Sunday we are meditating John 15 verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. The word friend is sometimes used very liberally. Because some people say they have lots of friends, but what they really mean is that they have many acquaintances. On the other hand, there are people who are close to each other, but they cannot keep a secret, so they don't show the loyalty that the relationship calls for. Also, there are people who are very close to each other, but they make each other worse. They don't build each other up. So at the end of the day, I think we can define a friend as somebody who is close to you, loyal to you, and also wants the very best for you. Of course, that doesn't mean that friendship is pure bliss, because obviously there are times when you disagree with your friend, when they say that you are doing something wrong, but you think your behavior is beyond reproach. But generally, there is more joy than sorrow in the relationship. Now, when it comes to friendship with God, it's not that easy, because it's like your mom or your teacher saying, hey, let's be best friends. Yeah, right. Be friends with an authority figure. Good luck. It may work in theory, but in practice we are either scared of the authority or we become too familiar and we begin to take this person for granted or even look down on her. And there are people who say, yes, God is my best friend, but then again, if that's so, then why don't they spend time with that friend? Or why don't they laugh with that friend? Or why don't they show their true selves to that friend? What kind of friend is that? Actually, a very special one, because while his disciples wanted to see him as a political leader, as a king who would liberate Israel, he showed them, among other things, by washing their feet, that he has no trouble with being a servant. In fact, service, love, loving service is his nature. So when he says we are his friends, he really wants us to believe it and to come closer. But on the basis of our experiences with authority figures, we may put a barrier to such intimacy. We may be afraid and walk on eggshells around him, fearing to discuss anything trivial with him. On the other hand, it sometimes happens that when somebody is very close to us, we may take that person for granted. And the direction is reverse. We turn that person from a friend into a servant. Perhaps it happened because we forgot about one of the most important ingredients of friendship or any other relationship, the choice. For some reason you chose your friends and you are still choosing them to remain your friends because something in their being resonated with yours. Unless you are a very cynical person who likes to use people, you chose your friends because being with them gives you joy. By the same token, we have been chosen to be God's friends, not because he needed somebody to do the work in the garden, but because he wanted to be with us. Because being with us gives him joy. 
So if we want to spread this joy and respond to this friendship with friendship, it would be perhaps a good idea to remind other people, especially now when so many people are obsessed with how well they are doing in society, that it doesn't really matter what they bring to the table. What matters is to sit together at the table. Hope to see you this Sunday at our meditation table, 10pm as usual, Central European time. Bye-bye.